Hey there, welcome back guys. In this video we're going to show you, well we're going to actually see if we can repair the lawnmower with this 3D printed wrench. Yeah, that's right. We actually printed a wrench with a 3D printer, the Ender 3 S1 Pro, and the, the uh, blade was due service. But we're going to try and see if we can actually put the blade back on using this thing. As you can see, it's adjustable. Look at that. Open and actually there's open and there is it closing but will it hold up to the strength of actually putting the blade back on right so without and actually holding up to mowing the lawn so without any further ado let's get started let's see if this tool that was 3d printed um, will actually work and who knows maybe we'll be able to 3d print the drill come on let's get started right, we're going to open up Kira uh, the latest one, which is 5.7.0. And um, what we're going to do is, for me, I'm going to open up Recent. I'll leave a link to the STL file for the wrench in the description down below. So you should be able to click it. For me, it's going to be um, Wrench Door Handle. See that? Uh, why it opens up over here, I don't know. But if it does, you just click right there. Make sure you're over here and Move. See where it says Move? And then we're just going to slide it onto the bill plate. See that? Uh, and see, it's not going to print. Um, it's great. It's like camouflage, which means that there's not enough space. So we have to actually scale it down. Even though it's a power tool, um, we're just going to go over here, scale. And make sure uniform scaling is selected. See that right here? Uniform. And for this, I'm thinking I'm going to do 70%. 70 is pretty good, or even 80. 80 might give you a little big of a bigger, robust tool. See, look at that. Uh, maybe if we're lucky. If not, we may have to scale it down. All right, so now what you're going to do is see on the top right hand side, voila. And for me, um, recommended, I'm just going to reset the settings. See, for you, it'll look like this. See, when you click it, um, you might see that, or you might have other settings. All right, so then we're just going to go here, show custom. And I'm just going to scroll down, right? We're just going to change some things a little bit so that it actually prints. We're going to click support. Um, for me, I can tell you that this is what worked for me. But if you can get it to print another way, please do share. Uh, support structure, see right there? I'm going to choose tree. And then instead of everywhere, I'm going to do touching build plate. Um, and I think that's it. But actually for this, I think I'm going to leave it at 60 because it will take a long time to print. Uh, and then for here, what you want to do with uh, build plate adhesion, instead of skirt, we're going to do raft. What I like about raft is that you'll be able to rip it right off, hopefully in the perfect world, and then use uh, pliers with the remaining um, remnants. All right, so we're going to slice it. And you'll see as we move forward into the video, three hours and 15 minutes. Sometimes with prints like this that have moving parts, I, I like to, um, I'm not sure what you guys do, but I like to scale them down first. Um, and if, let's say, for example, maybe at 50%, right? And the reason why is because, let's say if we did at 50%, because everyone's printer is different. Uh, if I slice it, right? At 50%, it's only going to take two hours. And at two hours, if you can tell if it's a really good STL file, uh, because if it prints and it's scaled at any particular size, sometimes it just work wonders, like some of those fidgets that you've seen in my videos that have moving parts. So if it prints well, um, when it's when it's uh, scaled down, that's great. Uh, but some STL files can't be scaled down. So in this case, I'm going to say, since it's a tight wrench, I'm going to say 60. 60 should work, but we'll see. Uh, so let's slice it. And three hours is better than I think the original was eight hours for this thing to print. All right. So now, now that it's sliced, right, we're just going to get rid of this here by clicking there. And then we're just going to um, zoom in a little bit so that we can see how it's going to print. See the layers? Look at that. Well, in order to see the layers, you have to go to preview. See? And then this is the raft. And the, I chose the raft because I can just rip it off. Um, because the other way just didn't work for me. And it's 106 layers. See that right there? And then we're just going to go down and see, that's layer one. And then it just keeps going. And these are the tree supports that'll hold it up because it can't print in thin air. I, at first I thought, wow, this is really cool. Because I have seen some prints actually print um, 
but this one does require support. Some, if you're lucky, some STL files will just miraculously print into thin air and then, you know, you're wondering like, wow. But anyway, this does, and I chose tree supports because it actually worked for me, but everyone's printer is different. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more so that we can see one last time um, how everything is just going to pan out. Look at that, kind of neat, right? And look at that, it's gonna print the logo and everything. Um, and again, you can just watch it, see that? Anyway, let's um, save this to the disk, right? Save it as whatever you want. And I'm just gonna replace what's there and click yes. And um, let's see, let's check this baby out on the printer and see how it's going. Nice, so after three failed attempts, the print is finally coming out uh, the way I want it to. I, I tried one without support and I tried another uh, with supports on board only, but that didn't work. Uh, and now I'm trying with the raft and tree supports. And so far, so good as you can see. And this is to give you a look at how, how it actually uh, is on the inside. Look, at it's pretty solid. So it should hold out to the strength of moving something. And there it is. Um, check it out. The finished product. And look at how, how the logo came out. It just says Creality uh, and, and a nice font. And, and it's amazing how it did that. But good looks will only get us so far because we need for this thing to actually work on the lawn mower. And the reason why I chose the raft is so that hopefully I can just tear everything off. Um, you know, it'll, it, it, the print just finished. So usually I like to wait for the prints to finish before, I mean, to cool off before I actually start taking them off. But, you know, I think so far so good. I think I'll just uh, use the spatula. See how easy how it just slid right off. Look at that. Uh, and that's what happens when you wait for your prints to cool down. All right, so there we go. There's the other wrench that just didn't work. I stopped it because as you can see, it just didn't have supports. And hopefully if all goes well, look, with the tree supports, you can just tear it right off. I'm gonna maybe see if I can print this um, on a raft. Well, well, actually you just can't print it on a raft because it does need supports because the, the uh, tip of the wrench is actually in the air and you can't really print into thin air. And so there I am with the pliers and you just, it's, it'll, it'll, it'll take a little bit of time. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have to pluck away at it just so that you can just um, uh, uncover the, the wrench and be really careful not to ruin anything or even that dial that turns. You, you don't want to nip it with the uh, pliers because if you do, um, you know, it, it won't turn on the, on the uh, tracks and then basically you're going to have to print the whole thing all over again. So again, do not um, damage the uh, spinny thingy that's inside that allows the wrench to open and close because if you do you're going to have to print it again because it will not be able to move on the tracks but if you have a better way to print this please do share because I've already tried a few as you can see I'm just using a screwdriver it does require patience because you want to make sure that you don't damage it because again if you do it's going to be three hours so imagine uh, luckily for the, the one you see in front of me uh, I stopped that print and there was another print and I actually uh, damaged it uh, trying to figure out how this thing actually uh, comes apart. And I had used the default settings that were suggested by the fellow who actually created this STL file, but it just didn't work out for me on my printer. So there I am just plucking away, you know, one little bit at a time and you'll get there. Uh, just pretend you're an archeologist and just digging away at some uh, ma massive, amazing find and you're just gonna have to chip away one little, little pluck at a time. And, and you know, eventually you'll get there and uncover this amazing masterpiece, this tool that hopefully we'll be able to use to repair the lawnmower and put the uh, blade back on if all goes well in the perfect world. Um, and as you can see, there there are some some uh, challenging areas on the end. And as you can see, you know, uh, only one part I clipped off. The part that you see at the top, I just left. But those two parts that are sticking out at the... Um, uh, uh, the bottom of those I clipped and that kind of like opens up the gateway and the door so that the wrench can actually um, move up and move down as you spin the wheel, which is actually pretty cool. And, um, you know, although I did pluck it off, I cut it on another one and it, 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 it worked fine. Uh, but again, I'm not, you know, that familiar with the tools. So I just left it there because I wasn't sure if removing it actually um uh, will hinder the experience and then, you know, leave me printing it again. So I just tried to take as much as I could 
off that just needed to be taken off. And you know, you'll need a tweezers. As you can see, we just use the tweezers a little bit and the tweezers just helps to get anything that might fall in. Uh, and as you can see, um, the tricky part is getting it going because you have to sort of like unlock it. Um, you know, it's not like other fidgets. Well, this isn't a fidget, it's a tool, but some fidgets just print and the parts just move. And as you can see, I'm just gonna try and pry it out. So. Um, but I'm just gently turning the knob and once you turn the knob, right, I got to turn it in so I can get that other piece out. There's one piece that just pops out one turn. See, it came out, which is great. And now I got to get out the other piece, right, just slowly. See, it came out, uh, but there's a little bit of a remnants in there, but I need to just somehow uh, finagle it so it just comes comes out. And in order to do that, you're going to have to... Um, uh, tighten the wrench, meaning bring it in some so that the opening isn't so big. So, uh, but again, remember, you have to just sort of loosen it in the perfect world. Um, it would turn, you know, I could just turn it, but as you can see, I'm having difficulty turning it and you might have difficulty turning it too. And once you turn it, once it turns, it, it's, you're golden. It, it's basically unlocked and, and ready to be used as a tool. As you can see, I'm just sort of, but there's that one piece you got to get out too that will allow it to like uh, extract. See, I got it out. And then there's another piece in there. I think I took out the other part too um, that was in there, which is okay. It, it, it's just more cosmetic. Um, so you can, you know, you can take that. So you'll see me take it out in just about a second. Um, you can, again, you sort of like have to move it around to, to unlock it. Right. And then um, hopefully in the perfect world, uh, you know, you just turn it lightly with the, uh, remember, don't squeeze it and just turn it. Right. And once you turn it um, without uh, uh, letting the teeth, you know, grind the part, right? Because as you can see, I managed to, to do it gently. And then watch, see, it just turns, it opens and it closes. Look at that, see, kind of neat. And I was able to get the other piece out. Now the wrench is open and we're just going to close it. And it, ideally, this would be perfect. It would be even better if it was so, somewhat like a hex uh, uh, wrench because then it would really lock on to the lawnmower. See, there we are. And voila, um, let's see how this thing actually works on the lawnmower. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna get our lawnmower. Uh, we've got our tool here, our wrench, the Creality. It's kind of neat how it printed the logo. Check that out. And we've got our Toro. Uh, we're gonna have to put the blade back on, which is right here. I usually have the blade sharpen um, two or three times a month because it cuts the grass better. It looks like we're gonna have to cut the I'll mow the lawn soon. All right, so anyway, here we are. I'm just gonna pull it outside. Um, you can do it in here. Lighting's probably better, but I just wanna do it outside in case there's a leak. The leak will just happen right over there. Uh, usually there isn't, but you never know. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, so when tipping your lawnmower over, this has to be up in the air, because that's the filter. So if you tilt it the other way towards me, um, to where the camera is, everything's going to drip. But um, to avoid the drip, you remember, uh, if you're tilting over your lawnmower, you're gonna, um, of course, you want to uh, cut off the gas line, right? In case while you're turning it, the power um, accidentally starts. Because remember, when you, you have to pull it, right, to start it. But we're not going to do that. Um, and you could, if it's somewhere here, but I don't see it. Um, it's probably somewhere in there. We might see it when we tip it over. Um, so remember, tip it over this way, see, and then voila. I was going to say you could disconnect the uh, uh, spark plug, but I don't see it. It's probably somewhere there. You probably want to do that too. So when you turn it, nothing happens. So we're going to unscrew this bolt right here. Uh, nice. This will definitely fit. 17, and we'll be able to adjust this so that it becomes a 17. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to grab the blade is right here see that all right so we'll go like that see right in there just hold it steady see that and then we'll just seat it in until it's tight enough um, line that up so that that locks in and then We'll uh, open this up, right? It's probably gonna open a lot. Anyway, we might have to cut it. So let's see, we can flip it over. Oops, there we go. 
mice, it's turning. So that it's really tight and locking in. You can lock it in a little bit more. Make it a little bit snug. Nice, so this is working. Oh, look at that. Pretty good. Just gotta make it just the right tightness, right? Remember this way, when you're pulling it, pull it, push it towards the shed. The shed's right there. So it's going uh, counterclockwise to go uh, smaller, okay? And then making it a little bit tight. Now it's your turn. Yeah, look at that. Except I believe turning it the wrong way. Yeah. Nice. And you see it's like a hex bolt underneath. And now. <clears throat> That's pretty tight. Definitely good. Still works. I think printing it the full size at 100% or even 90%, my, my print bed wouldn't let me, but probably because I did a raft uh, support. It's as small as you can go. Not bad, not bad actually, but let's see if this thing will start. Just gonna flip it back over. Whoops. Open the gas line again. Again, you probably wanna disconnect the spark plug just in case, and we will you know, but instead I just did this, the gas line only. Ah, here's a spark plug right here in the front from this mower, ideally when you're turning it. All right, so let's see, let's start this baby up. Not on the rocks, we'll do it on the grass. There we go. Kind of neat, huh? They cut the whole lawn. Check it out. Just have a look. Worked out pretty good. Um, you know, I still have a lot more to go. I was only able to do two sections, but in the end, it does look like it cut. You know, not, well, it's not the cut we're looking for. It's actually making sure that this tool was actually strong enough to um, put the blade back on and hold without the blade flying off. Right, because you know, you can only turn it so much before this thing actually breaks. This is printed at 70%. I'd say at 100%, you would probably get more power out of it, but this worked out pretty good at 70% um, 70, 70 scale down, you know, because you can actually fit it in your pocket or in your sleeve, wherever you decide to keep it. Not bad, don't you think? And that's pretty much it. That's how you use your 3D printer, the Ender 3 S1 Pro, to print the tools you need to make repairs around your house. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.